You're watching the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, a group in Bourbon County, Kansas has received a grant to help those who are struggling with food insecurities. Our very own Melissa Alexis shows us how this grant will have an impact. Also, election authorities are working hard to get ahead of this year's elections. KOM Samantha Walker goes in depth on how Oklahoma plans to attract more staff for their polling stations. And we have an alert day today and tomorrow for dangerous heat across the four states. Heat index values up to 115 degrees. We'll look at that forecast and get you out the door. Coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 a.m. now on this Tuesday morning. Yes. And we only have a couple days left. Uh, actually, we have a day left of July. Yes. Yes, it's today. been a pretty nice July. And it so really sad was. to see it go, especially yeah. as it's getting warmer. It was one of the cooler Julys that we yep. have had here in the four states. I know it was still hot, but I mean, in terms of average temperatures, we had a number of below normal days. Yes. Which is all right. Unfortunately, that has gone away, yep. and we're going to talk more about that here in just a yes. few minutes. Well, the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team received a grant to address food insecurity in Bourbon County. The $55,000 grant will be given each year over the course of three years. KOEM's Melissa Alexis shares how the grant addresses a growing problem. Because no one should be hungry or thirsty. Lisa Robertson is a community health worker with the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team who received a $55,000 grant to help with food insecurity in Bourbon County. She says the grant will allow them to do more to help those in need. I have a backpack that I take around to individuals in the community. Like on the hot days, my backpack will be filled with ice cold waters and it'll be filled with snacks that we can give out to people that are just on the street and um, are thirsty and they just need that hydration. The Healthy Bourbon County Action Team helps those in need with finding transportation, shelter and food. She says they can't help the community without the help of grants like the one they received from the Kansas Food Action Network. I just see big possibilities um, because our main goal is just helping individuals and just helping people. And with money, money makes things possible, you know, because we don't always have access to money and funding to do what we want to do. And so having a grant um, given to us will be such a benefit to help this community. The organization has fed 400 people in need since 2022. And the executive director, Rachel Carpenter, says this grant will help them meet the needs of the community, which is crucial considering the rates of poverty in Bourbon County. But the data for our health rankings and 24% of our children are in poverty. And so that just plays a part into food insecurity. Um, and there's many uh, social determinants of health that surrounds food insecurity, whether it's transportation or access to food or Having someone have to choose between paying their medical bills and then paying for food for their table. Carpenter says anyone can be susceptible to food insecurity. We're just one to two paychecks away from being food insecure, really. Um, but we at the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team, we have a population of focus, and that is the disabled and elderly and low-income residents and minority residents. The Healthy Bourbon County Action Team is in the process of hosting meetings to figure out how to best use the grant to make a difference in the community. Reporting in Fort Scott, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. The organization is organizing a food summit within the next year where residents of Bourbon County can voice their needs. Certainly I'm, that grant will go a long way Absolutely. up there to help folks with food insecurity. Nobody, Certainly. as they said, should ever be hungry. Absolutely not. No. Well, you definitely want to make sure you've got the cold water handy because it is going to be dangerously hot out there. That's why we have that alert day. We have a number of heat, excessive heat warnings and heat advisories across the area. So uh, those are those excessive heat warnings for nearly every county in our viewing area. And in those warnings, you could easily see heat index values up to 115 degrees. And the heat advisories, uh, they are that much lower in terms of what their uh, qualifications are 
for dangerous heat. We're still talking though heat index values 105 to 110 degrees. This is dangerous as we've mentioned, potentially deadly heat across the area uh, over the next few days out there. Future track is still showing that possibility of an isolated shower or storm. A majority of us though will remain dry as we head through the day today. We'll have otherwise partly cloudy skies and a south southwest wind gusting like it did yesterday, upwards of about 25 miles an hour. 78 in Joplin, 78 in Pittsburgh. So already a fairly warm start to the day. Temperatures out there upper 70s to near 80 degrees. So that's uncomfortable. Then you factor in the dew point in the humidity and we have heat index values in the low to mid 80s for the majority of us out there. So again, just an uncomfortable, unpleasant start to the day. We're going to be partly cloudy today. Again, an isolated shower storm possible highs, upper 90s, lower 100s. Absolutely possible the further west that you go. And again, the big thing that we've got to keep an eye on is that heat index value up to 115 degrees. Remember, we have a number of heat safety tips on our website at koamnewsnow.com. We're going to talk about how long this dangerous heat's going to last and if there's any other rain chances on the way in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, police in Independence, Missouri are investigating a series of car break ins from over the weekend. Surveillance footage from several locations shows the suspects entering multiple unlocked vehicles and stealing one that authorities later recovered in Coffeeville. The IPD have asked the public for any additional information or video. They also say car break ins can almost entirely be eliminated simply by locking a car's doors. Well, with election authorities already preparing for August and November elections, they are looking to find workers to help staff the polls. KOM Samantha Walker has more on how Oklahoma hopes an increase in pay will bring out more workers. With November 5th fast approaching, local election officials are hoping to find enough workers to staff the polls. Oklahoma state law requires each voting precinct to have at least three workers ready to fulfill the roles of an inspector, a judge, and a clerk. An inspector is the primary officer of a precinct election board. A judge helps to check the proof of identity of each voter, while a clerk issues ballots. Without each of these roles filled, a precinct is not allowed to open, and staffing has become an issue as workers retire from participating. A lot of our poll workers are older because they, they're retired, so they have the, the time that they can volunteer. Uh, and as those workers age out, then we definitely would, would need some new poll workers. But a bill passed in 2023 hopes to change that for Oklahoma precincts. Now poll worker pay is being doubled, with roles like election judges being paid $200 rather than $100. Election officials say they hope the increase will help with poll worker recruitment and retention. Staff at the Ottawa County Election Board say they are already seeing the results. I've had several of my poll workers say that, that uh, the increase in pay is definitely keeping them around. Um, but I've had more people volunteer to be a poll worker. That, and it, so I do think it'll help with um, recruiting. You don't have to have any previous experience to be a precinct worker. You just have to participate in a mandatory training. Poll workers work in the county where they are registered to vote. Reporting in Ottawa County, Samantha Walker, KOM News. You can learn more about how to sign up to be a poll worker on our website. That's koamnewsnow.com. And those are our top news stories this half hour. Coming up next, Jasmine Kyle from the SEK Humane Society joins us this morning to share about an event for the third annual Bad Pet Portraits Fundraiser. We've got a Jasmine Kyle, the SEK Humane Society with us this morning, and she wants to invite you to the third annual Bad Pet Portraits Fundraiser. It starts next week. Welcome to you. Thank you Hi. so much for being with us this morning. So talk to me a little bit about these bad pet portraits. Yeah, we, we call them bad just because they're not professional, but we <laughs> started this three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and for a five dollar donation, what you do is you drop off a physical photo okay. of your animal mm -hmm. or animals and we'll draw them for you. So <laughs> it's us, it's um, our employees at, out at the shelter, it's our okay. employees at the doggy bag and even some of our board members. But starting next week from August 6th to the 10th, okay. for five dollars, you can come drop off a photo and we will draw them. So we think they're pretty good. They're not professional by any <laughs> means, but we started this three years ago. 
Yes. Um, and it's been really popular. Yeah. So, um, but look we, at that. Yeah, it's so pretty cute. We think it's a really cute <laughs> fundraiser, and you get something that's really unique and you can't really get yes. it anywhere else and it's also really nice for our staff to just kind of meet mm -hmm. and get to know your animals and just take some time to create these lovely pieces of artwork um, it's just a really fun and cute fundraiser that not only do our staff enjoy yes. but it's also something fun for the community to get involved in yes it's definitely unique and now it's five dollars. Where do these yeah. proceeds go towards? Yeah, so it goes all to our fur babies. So that's mm -hmm. a final or babies vaccine. Mm -hmm. It's several cans of wet cat food. It all goes back to the fur babies. And it's really nice because some of the photos we'll see are like returning members. Mm -hmm. So like we'll have some, we have a wonderful lady and she does it every year with us. Or we see some of our own adoptees and we get oh. to see them doing how they're yes. doing in their new homes and their new names. So it's a wonderful way just to contribute. Absolutely, absolutely. And so this will be, as you said, August 6th, the 10th, where mm -hmm. people can sign up, pay the $5 yep. and drop out the photo. When can they go to pick them up? Yeah, so that's going to be August mm -hmm. 20th through the 24th. Just gives a little bit more yes. time, but it does have to be a physical photo just because we have such a large amount of them and it gets distributed into three groups. But August 6th through the 10th, it's drop off mm -hmm. at our doggy bag resale shop at 514 North Broadway. Okay all the way from that next Tuesday through that Saturday, yes. and then give us like a week and a half, two weeks, and they'll be ready for pickup. And is there any limit on how many photos you guys are drawing? No, and we don't do just cats and dogs. Okay. We've had lizards, we've had guinea pigs, we've had horses oh, submitted. Yes. So any type of pet that you want, yes. we will draw up for you. Well, definitely take them up on it. We will, of course, have all that information later on on our website, koemnewsnow.com. Thank you so much, Jasmine, Thank for being you. with us this morning. We'll be right back with more of the KOM Morning News right after this. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 716 now on this Tuesday morning. We're taking a look at Skywatch Storm Tracker. Still got a few isolated showers out there in the parts of southeastern Kansas, so not much. We've got a thunderstorm, some lightning there near Emporia. Now, this is kind of reminiscent of this shower here back when it was a storm uh, back off a little further to the northwest. Quite a bit of lightning once these things actually get going, but then they very quickly die out as well. So we got a shower near Burlington, one north of Yates Center, and this decaying shower just north of Bronson out there. So yeah, if you watch, you can see all that lightning that came real quickly. Actually, that shower is now pretty well gone, but we are seeing some activity attempt to redevelop. Unfortunately, you look at our, our highlighted county area, look at how much of us aren't seeing anything. That's going to be the case with our rain chances over the next uh, couple of three days here. We'll have isolated chances of a shower or thunderstorm. The majority of us are simply going to be dry, hot, and muggy and breezy. South Southwest winds today still gusting upwards of 25 miles an hour. We head into our Wednesday and it is the same situation, perhaps an isolated shower or thunderstorm. The majority of us are unfortunately going to remain dry. However, look at these temperatures at 10 o'clock at night. Remember, pop-up storms and showers feed off the heating of the day. But well, we've still got plenty of heating going on even late at night, so we could get an additional stray shower or two. We go into our Thursday, another similar situation, maybe an isolated shower or storm, otherwise just hot and muggy. And that's why we have alert days today and tomorrow at least, and we might even go further than that. We have these excessive heat warnings for majority of the area, and in these zones, you could see heat index values approaching 115 degrees. And in the heat advisories, it's not much better. We're talking heat index values 105 to 110 degrees. This is dead, uh, dangerous, potentially deadly heat. So some quick reminders, make sure that you're taking your pets on early morning walks like right now, like an hour ago, and otherwise they've got to be inside. Kids really need to be inside. They don't understand the dangers of the heat. They'll keep playing until they get sick, and we don't want that to happen. And make sure they're staying hydrated. Water, PD light pops. I'm sure a number of our companies with outdoor workers in the area are taking appropriate precautions, providing something to drink, but make sure you're taking advantage of that. Take advantage of frequent breaks, find shade where you can, and check in on the elderly. Make sure their AC especially is still running because these things are going to get quite a workout over the next several days. We're at that point where, again, heat exhaustion is likely, heat stroke is possible, and we have these safety tips and 
some of the warning signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke on our website at KOMnewsnow.com. Got a smattering of clouds over Joplin right now. 78 feels like 80. That dew point at 71. Temperatures to start our day are in the upper 70s to right around 80 degrees. And then we look at those dew points. And the dew points for most of us are in the low to mid 70s. We do have uh, some upper 70s here and there. So that puts us in the muggy, soupy, and beyond range out there. So a very uncomfortable start leading to heat index values already into the low to mid 80s across a good portion of the four states. We got our morning started again, a stray shower or storm. Most of us dry, partly cloudy, upper 80s by 11 o'clock today. Our highs today going into the upper 90s, lower 100s with that again, that chance of an isolated shower or storm. Mostly clear skies overnight, no relief from the heat. We'll stay right around 80 for our overnight lows. And as we head down the week, 100 degrees, maybe a little better tomorrow and I mean, a little higher than 100 near 100 Thursday. And we hold on to these high temperatures all the way into next week. Sunny skies, upper 90s, lower 100s. The only relief we're seeing right now looks to be next Thursday with some scattered storm chances and temperatures into the low 90s. That's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News. We've got our good friend Charlene Patton joining us all the way from Topeka as she's here with something that with this heat will help you keep your house a little cooler. Welcome back <laughs> to the show. So thank you. You've got something that as we were discussing in the break, you don't need any heat in the kitchen to make. What do we got here? We are making a wild green salad with a special dressing. Okay. And you know, you can get all kinds of dressings in the grocery store, but it's kind of fun to make your own. Yeah. And this one has lots of flavor in it. But to start with, we just have a mixture of greens. So okay. whatever you want to have for, for your salad and then we're going to put some raspberries on it these are fresh okay. raspberries but you know chris like when you're doing it yourself if you'd rather have another fruit strawberries oranges whatever you want you can even add several different fruits the okay. raspberries really do give this a pretty color to it though and add that to your salad yeah. to that then after you do the raspberries we have some uh, yeah. walnuts i did toast those in the oven so they just brings out the flavor and makes them a little bit crispier okay and uh, usually about 10 minutes in the oven at 350 and then about halfway through it shake the pan a little bit to kind of move them around and um, then they're done so those were cooled this is gorgonzola cheese now it's a lot like blue cheese so if you don't like that strong flavor of the cheese you could definitely use a different one but it really does go nicely with the raspberries and the walnuts and our greens that we have there okay now the special part of this is the dressing right yeah this is um i did it in the blender it's fresh raspberries, basalic vinegar, vegetable oil, little red onion, and do that until it's nice and a little bit of salt in, uh, that we have with it. Drizzle that on it. But I love this dressing. You don't need to use it all. You put what you don't use back in the refrigerator and look at that color that it adds, that bright that red. That looks wonderful. And to, you could do this same recipe and use it with strawberries too. Okay, so you got so you, that's a, that's the thing I love about a number of these recipes is you present the ingredients, but there's a number of alternatives if you don't necessarily like that one thing you can change it up and it's not going to have a significant impact on on how it comes out it's still going to be amazing that's right because you're making it yourself so you can easily make those adjustments that your family likes and of course aside from toasting the walnuts you don't have to get the heat going in the kitchen with that <laughs> oven there so and the walnut toasting doesn't take that long so that's some good news with how hot it's going to be here across the area and of course certainly folks want this recipe any of the other ones what do they need to do. They can call our 800 number 877 KS Soybean or you can go to our website at kansassoybeans.org get all the recipes for July. And that's an excellent thing to do and go ahead and get those recipes now so you can start working on them. As we mentioned too, uh, over this month you know keeps the kids busy. A lot of these are handy for the kids to do. So That's right. Charlene thank you so much for joining us. So of course if you missed out on any of that don't worry it's going to be on our website as well koamnewsnow.com We'll be back with more of the KOAM way of morning news right after this. The four states most watched news starts now. 
Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's just coming up on 729. I'm Elise Snowy. Authorities arrested Deputy School Resource Officer in Newton County for domestic assault. Neosho police responded to the report over the weekend. They arrested this man, Joseph Childers, an SRO for the Diamond School District in Newton County, County Deputy. Childers has been charged with second degree domestic assault. He is currently being held in the McDonald County Jail without bond. Well, even though the official start to Marion Days is in until Thursday, it's already starting to look like a small city is growing inside of Carthage, Missouri. Every year, the annual Catholic Vietnamese celebration brings in tens of thousands of visitors to the Maple Leaf City. And guess the Carthage Chamber President says bring a big boost to the local economy. Have an influx of 100,000 people that come to your community. They're shopping here, they're eating here, they're getting their gas. It is a big economic impact to our community. Uh, we welcome them, we want them to feel welcome, and they do really well at patronizing our businesses. Thousands of the visitors choose to camp and even more stay in local hotels and Airbnbs. Well, beyond the call of duty is a traveling memorial that pays tribute to fallen officers across the country. I made a stop yesterday at the Joplin Police Department and features images of Officer Jake Reed and Corporal Ben Cooper. The memorial also featured Carthage High School graduate Officer Lane Burns, who died in the line of duty in 2022 as a Bone Tear, Missouri police officer. When there is a loss, uh, initially there is a huge outpouring of support. Um, and over, over a little bit of time, some of that kind of dwindles away. And all the while, the families, friends and families, their lives changed forever that day. McCarter says they created the traveling memorial so that people all over the country hear fallen officer stories, see their faces and support their families. The entire annual trip is 23,000 miles. Now here's Chris with a quick look at your forecast. Yeah, we've got an alert day today and into tomorrow as well, and this is why we have excessive heat warnings across most of the area, and this is for heat index values that could approach 115 degrees. You, we've mentioned it before. We're going to mention it again. You have to treat this heat as if it was a severe weather situation. You would take appropriate precautions if we had severe thunderstorms or you know, if we had a tornado warning, you need to take the same precautions or be, you know, be as safe with this as you would with severe weather. You've got to make sure you're staying hydrated, stay indoors if you can, take frequent breaks if you have to be outside. And even in the heat advisories, you're not much better. Heat index value is still 105 to 110 degrees. Future track does show again the opportunity for a couple of stray showers or thunderstorms as we head into this afternoon. The majority of us will simply be hot and dry. And we'll have those south southwest winds gusting upwards of about 25 miles an hour. We've already seen a few pop up showers this morning in parts of south eastern Kansas, but really there's not much out there. 78 in Joplin right now, up to 79 in Pittsburgh and around the region. Temperatures have been warm uh, all morning long, upper 70s to right around 80 degrees. And then you factor in the dew point and the humidity and you get those heat indexes. And this is where we're sitting. Uh, some upper 70s, but a number of low to mid 80s. And look at Miami right now. Feels like 87 degrees and it's 732 in the morning and it almost feels like 90. Heat index values rose very quickly yesterday. They're going to do the same thing today, hence the advisories and the warnings out there. We're looking at partly cloudy skies today. Again, maybe a stray shower or storm. Uh, highs, upper 90s, lower 100s, absolutely possible, especially the further west you go. And for a good portion of the area, heat index values up to 115 degrees. Don't forget, we have a number of heat safety tips and the warning signs of heat stroke and heat exhaustion on our website, koamnewsnow.com. We'll have another full forecast talk about how long this heat lasts here in just a few more minutes. Elise. As the temperatures climb, wildfires are surging across the western U.S. and destroying land and structures. But there's also physical risks from the massive clouds of smoke that a new study is shedding light on. Fox News' Ted Lindner takes a closer look at the possible dangers. Multiple large blazes continue decimating communities across the west. With California's Park Fire, one of the largest in the state's history, threatening to destroy thousands of structures as it charred through more than 373,000 acres across at least four northern counties as of Monday. 
We knew it was going to be bad. We just didn't know how bad it was going to be. Insurance companies in the Golden State have been dropping homeowners coverage as the risk of wildfires continues to grow. Ron Ward recently lost his before the park fire inched towards his property. He stayed behind to fight off the flames and save his home. Put in a, a high-pressure fire pump and put up sprinklers all the way around our property. The pump that I was talking about got delivered the same time the fire started. In Colorado, meanwhile... The Alexander Mountain Fire, north of Boulder, quickly spread to more than 300 acres as of Monday, forcing evacuations. Anxious moments. Yes, for sure. Fires like these produce thick smoke that can travel for miles and bring air quality to dangerous levels. According to a new study out this week, breathing in small particles found in wildfire smoke may be worse for people's brain health than other types of air pollution. Officials at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference say the research suggests that wildfire smoke may even lead to an increased risk of dementia. With wildfire season lasting until the fall, health experts say those in affected areas should stay indoors when faced with poor air quality. Ted Lindner, Fox News. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOA Morning News. Maryland kids are learning to get their hands dirty by planting their very own garden. In Consumer Watch this morning, the U.S. national debt reaches a new milestone. The Treasury Department reports the national debt surpassed $35 trillion for the first time as the government accumulates debt at a historic pace. The report comes just three months after the national debt reached $34 trillion. The Congressional Budget Office estimates the federal government's budget deficit will reach $1.9 trillion this year. The U.S. Appeals Court blocks a new rule to require transparency on airline fees. The Transportation Department's new rule would require airlines to be upfront about its fees until a full review is completed. The new rule was meant to provide more on insight on what consumers are paying for, but the judges ruled that it exceeds the agency's authority. The panel also says the rule could cause irreparable harm toward airlines. Out with the old and in with the new, Target says it wants your old jeans in exchange for a discount on some new ones. Target announces, announces its first ever denim take back event yesterday. The event will take place August 4th to August 10th and the retailer says customers will be able to turn in their old jeans and receive 20% off a new denim purchase with Target Circle. Target says the goal of the new initiative is to make it affordable for customers to update their denim wardrobes. Well, a recent study by Bankrate found nearly half of homeowners want mortgage rates much lower before purchasing a new home. Jen Sullivan looks at how current rates are impacting home sales. It's part of the American dream, owning a home. But it's a dream that has recently been unreachable for many as inflation rates hit a 23-year high. High mortgage rates and high home prices have really deferred that dream for a lot of Americans. It's just really hard to buy a home right now, especially for first-time buyers. Jeff Ostrowski is an analyst at Bankrate. They recently conducted a survey with over 1,000 current home buyers and found 47% say they need to see mortgage rates fall below 5% for them to be comfortable purchasing a new home this year. 30 8% say they want to see those rates at less than 4%, but current rates are much higher than that. According to Freddie Mac, as of last week, a 30-year fixed mortgage rate was 6.78%. The expectations among Americans aren't really in line with the mortgage rate reality. The high rates could be turning away potential buyers. Existing home sales slipped in June to 5.4%, according to the National Association of Realtors. While sales are down, Prices are up. The median home sale price in June was $426,900. That's the second straight month prices have reached an all-time high. All those homeowners who locked in their 3% mortgage rates during the pandemic are in no hurry to, to get another mortgage at 7%. And that's really frozen the housing market. The good news is many economists predict the Federal Reserve will drop interest rates in September. But Ostrowski says the mortgage market will likely dip before the Fed acts. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 
Now to look at our top consumer stories, let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News. It is 743 on this Tuesday morning, and we're starting with the Skywatch Storm Tracker. Right now in our immediate area, just a couple of stray showers in the southeastern Kansas. But as you see, we do have some thunderstorms trying to, but man, it's like yesterday. They're kind of just forming right around our immediate coverage area here. We have some showers near Burlington, near Waverly. We've got those thunderstorms now east of Emporia, north of Madison. And these all, again, progressively trying to push off to the east across the area. Uh, they're still redeveloping, still some development even further back behind that, but the majority of us, unfortunately, through today are going to remain dry. However, we'll still have an opportunity for an isolated shower or storm as we head through the afternoon and into the evening hours out there. But uh, again, the rest of us just hot and muggy. That's why we have an alert day today and tomorrow as well because of the dangerous heat, which we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Wednesday, another opportunity for an isolated shower or storm. Greater opportunities for dangerous heat continuing across the area. And remember, pop up showers and storms uh, rely on the heating of the day. Here we are at 10 o'clock. It's still pushing 90 degrees in some locations, so we could get some additional showers late Wednesday night in the very early Thursday morning. Thursday, another hot, muggy, miserable day, but another opportunity for a stray shower or thunderstorm will be out there as well. Here's the uh, reason for our alert day. Take a look. The majority of our area under excessive heat warnings. So what that means is we could see heat index values in these zones upwards of 115 degrees. We're talking dangerous, potentially deadly heat. For the heat advisories, we're looking at heat index values 105 to 110. So it's not like you're going to be doing any better if you're under the advisory compared to the warning. Either way, you got to play it safe out there. So remember, we have a number of extreme heat safety tips on our website at koamnewsnow.com. We also have a handy graphic that explains the warning sign symptoms and the differences between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Heat stroke is potentially more deadly. Uh, heat Heat exhaustion still serious though, and you can find out all the warning signs there because that's the zone that we are in for these heat index values as we head through the next few days. Now, just a few clouds from our camera at 7th and range line. 78 in Joplin, dew points at 71, making it feel like 80 degrees. Temperatures across the region, upper 70s. We're getting right at 80 degrees, and we now got some low 80s, 81 in Miami. Then we throw in the dew points, which are absolutely uncomfortable. Got a lot of low to mid 70 degree dew points, but into northeastern Oklahoma, extreme southeast Kansas, we've got dew points in the upper 70s. So we go from muggy to soupy and beyond on the dew point tracker. And and that also produces uncomfortable heat index values already this morning. A lot of low to mid 80s and Miami it feels like it's 87 degrees this morning. We get our day underway, partly cloudy again, maybe an isolated shower storm. Most of us dry and hot 88 by 11 o'clock this morning. That's ahead of our highs going into the upper 90s and lower 100s with partly cloudy skies and again an isolated shower or storm out there. Heading into the evening, skies will eventually begin to clear out a little bit. We have a few clouds overnight. No relief from the heat. We're going to fall down right around 80 degrees for our overnight low. Some of you a little cooler, some of you a little warmer. And as we look into the next several days, there's just really no significant relief. I was looking at some of the long range data, and of course it will change a hundred times between now and then, but it looks like our next best chance of organized rain and relief from this heat is about another week, week and a half from now possibly even two weeks. So we're gonna have to deal with this for a while. 100 degrees on Wednesday, near 100 on Thursday, upper 90s on Friday, maybe isolated storm or two through Friday. Sunny skies heading into the next work week, keeping those temperatures upper 90s, lower 100s, and maybe a few storms next Thursday. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more of the KOM Morning News right after this. One group is working to pay it forward service to a county by planting seeds for a healthier future. The Sons of the American Legion has launched a new effort to get kids involved in gardening. As Natalie Brand shows us, the idea sprouted in Maryland and could spread nationwide. Tucked behind American Legion Post 217, a garden oasis. We've got our herbs right here. We've got a a whole variety of basil, oregano, 
and labor of love for Sean Phelan, who's growing fresh produce for veterans and their families. I'm only one person, so I needed some help. So he recruited a new generation of green thumbs. This is our new garden bed. Cultivating their appetite. You want to try one? And an appreciation for working in the dirt. How you have fresh air, getting out, eating vegetables instead of eating junk food. It's really cool to eat the food that you grow. The Post Pizza Garden has become a family and neighborhood affair. I think it's something that can involve everyone in the community. The Sons of the American Legion hopes this pilot program in Maryland takes off nationwide. Get children off the Xboxes, outside, doing something with their family, doing something with their parents. Or uh, the American Legion actually serves as some people's parents for kids who have single moms and dads. To get them in the American Legion, to get them outside, one of the sayings we used was get it in their hands to get it in their hearts. Most people think that I'm some sort of horticulturalist. Uh, I'm actually an IT programmer, so I spend all day writing computer code. And gardening is just my hobby. A passion rooted. I like the radish. You, you like the radish? radish? Well, you planted them. In giving back. Now, the Maryland Pizza Garden also attracted the support of local city council members with the hope that this will inspire other posts nationwide to adopt the concept. You know, that one kid said it the best, you know, it's great to eat what you grow. Yes, absolutely. Because it's yours. Yes. You, know, you had a hand in that. It's not something you just picked up from somewhere. You did it yourself. Fantastic. It's like making your own meals. Yeah, Okay. there you go. I don't know where I look. It's too hot and I'm too tired and it's been a long morning already. Let's uh, take a look at the Skywatch Storm Tracker, shall we? And see what we are growing out there, which right now we're growing a few scattered showers and storms, barely touching our viewing area, but uh, we do have some activity out there. We've got a shower near Burlington, just to the west of Garnett, north of Garnett as well. And we've got these showers north of Madison and Greenwood County. It's a thunderstorms east of Emporia out there, and that's really uh, about it. We had some pop up early this morning. They kind of died out and that's still cycling. And we have some additional storms developing back behind that. But again, we're just kind of in that point where with these isolated showers and storms, the majority of us, as you saw in the Skywatch Storm Tracker, are going to remain dry. Future track shows that opportunity for an isolated shower storm again through the afternoon into the evening. Then we'll see that pattern repeat as we go into our Wednesday. And we're also looking at the possibility of some gusty winds as well. Southwest, southwest winds upwards of 25 miles an hour, but the big story again is going to be the dangerous heat that's going to continue for us. We do have excessive heat warnings for most of the area. We're talking heat index values to 115 degrees out there and in the heat advisories, we're talking heat index values still 105 to 110. So do make sure you're taking appropriate precautions. And remember, we got a number of heat safety tips on our website. We have another look at your forecast the news you need to know right after this. Well, here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Authorities arrested Deputy School Resource Officer Joseph Childers in Newton County for domestic assault. Childers has been charged with second degree domestic assault and he is currently being held in the McDonald County Jail without bond. Beyond the Call of Duty made a stop at the Joplin Police Department yesterday to feature images of Officer Jake Reed in Purple Ben Cooper. The memorial also featured Carthage High School graduate officer Lane Burns, who died in the line of duty in 2022 as a bone tear Missouri police officer. A traveling memorial was created so that people all over the country can hear fallen officer stories, see their faces, and support their families. And the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team received a grant of $55,000 to help tackle food insecurity in Bourbon County. The grant will be given each year for three years and will help the organization give out food to the community. 400 people have been served since 2022 and the organization depends heavily on grants to feed those in need. And we have an alert day today and tomorrow. Excessive heat warnings out there. Heat index values to 115 are highs today. Upper 90s, lower 100s. And we have partly cloudy skies and maybe a stray shower or thunderstorm. Mostly clear skies tonight. Temperatures, no major relief from the heat as we fall back to about 80 degrees. And we're going to hold on to the dangerous heat over the next several days as well. Temperatures, upper 90s out there. Sunny skies return next week. Next best chance of rain is going to be next Thursday across the area. Alrighty. Well, eyewitness is footage captured over the weekend of a massive dragonfly swarm near Musquamcut Beach in Westerly, Rhode Island. Local media reported that beachgoers said the swarm descended like a black 
cloud causing people to leave. Dragonflies in North America migrate each year in late summer and early fall. They're an important part of the ecosystem since they eat mosquitoes and other insects. Experts say getting caught in a dragonfly swarm poses no risk to humans. It's just a little icky. Yeah, just a There's little bit, but everywhere. I like dragonflies, especially the fact that they eat mosquitoes. Yeah, I really like they're about they're them. they're pretty cool. Yeah. They're they're very neat looking mm -hmm. and they they seem to have a lot of fun yeah. and they eat mosquitoes yeah. like you said. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. Stay inside, stay safe, stay hydrated. We'll be back with more news and weather today at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.